you need to expect not to see an immediate result from personalization. You might see it once you break it down and see low level figures, but it's not going to add to your top line as soon as you hit launch. I think there's a lot of bootstrapping down to figure out what certain customer segments like and engage with and respond to. It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you solve your marketing problems and grow your e-commerce business. Cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and advice from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Hello and welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank you for hitting play and choosing to listen to one of our inspiring guests. Huge thank you to Nosto for introducing us to this brilliant guest uh, when I chaired a panel with them earlier this year at one of Nosto's events in London. So thank you, Nosto. In this episode, we're hitting the beauty sector. We're talking to someone who runs the e-commerce part of a business who sell beauty products in the clean beauty space. We're getting into what it, what the challenges are and the intricacies are when you're running uh, an e-commerce store that sells lots of other people's brands, 3,000 SKUs they're juggling, and how you, how you go about making your brand stand out at various stages of the marketing mix. We also get quite deep into personalization and their journey on personalization. A fair bit about getting to know your customer in here too. So loads of good little nuggets for you to take away. Make sure you listen to the end so you don't miss out on my guest's top tips and my own take on this episode. Are you struggling to boost your Shopify store's visibility? Then you need the Yoast SEO plugin for Shopify. It simplifies SEO by managing the technical complexity so you can focus on growing your business while still standing out in those search results. And they've just made your workload even easier because the new Yoast AI Generate feature is there to speed up the creation of those all important meta descriptions and SEO titles. With just a click, it generates multiple AI powered meta descriptions and title suggestions, quickly enhancing your store's visibility in search results. This is AI done right. You're in control deciding what works best for your store. Save time and stay in control. What are you waiting for? Get your SEO sorted. Learn more at ecmp.info forward slash Yoast dash Shopify. That's ecmp.info slash Y-O-A-S-T dash Shopify. And now to introduce our special guest. Judith Harvey is the e-commerce lead at Naturismo, the home of Ethical Beauty. Founded in 2008, they now sell via their Shopify store with seven-figure sales. Hello, Judith. Hey, Chloe. Awesome to be catching up with you again. How did you end up in the world of e-commerce? So I started in traditional merchandising in a big blue chip high street retailer, the lowest rung of the ladder. And I was a stock optimizer. So I sent the stock out to stores. And actually at that point in time, I don't think that retailer even had an e-commerce offering. I don't even think there was a website. I think that that obviously does show my age (laughs) a little bit. And they were onboarding a website at the time. But then my next move was another high street retailer that had a website. Maybe it took about 5% of the sales and actually the department was called Home Shopping. So again, (laughs) quite a retro. I remember those days. It's sold via catalog as well as the website. So I sat within that team and then actually every subsequent job from there felt much more aligned to what e-commerce is today. So managing the back end of a website and the product that feeds into it and the output that comes of it and then the trading alongside that as a separate channel to the store's channel. So yeah, from about 10 years ago, I feel I've been a true e-commerce colleague. And do you, you know, starting off on the merchandising side of things, nowadays, do you think of yourself as more merchandiser, marketer, e-commerce person? What's the, what's kind of like the word you go to? I do feel more of an e-commerce employee. I don't think I would have 
I don't think I'd be able to perform that well if I had to run stock forecasts or whizzies <laughs> or anything like that. That is such a heavy, intensive skill. And I've obviously got used to all the acronyms and jargon that e-commerce has within it. So I feel I'd be throwing things out and my merchandising colleagues wouldn't understand what I'm saying. Um, so I definitely feel within the depths of e-commerce, but I can still understand. It is a really useful background to have when talking to other factions of a company, understanding implications of stock and lead times and the need to churn through stock in your warehouse and things like that. So it is a useful background. Especially because in the beauty space, you've got the products do go off, not as fast as fresh food and vegetables, but there is an expiry date on them, isn't there? Just to add into the cash flow mix. Yes, completely. And because we're a natural, clean beauty business, there are um, oils in there and definitely other more natural products that do go off. So yeah, we have to monitor those really quickly. And then we have to make trading decisions if we've got surplus stock that will expire in X amount of time. So we do have to consider that. So you're based in the UK. Where do you sell to? Are you global selling or strictly UK only? So we've only got the .com domain and we mainly ship to the UK, but we do offer other shipping options. So we do have the next biggest market would be Europe and the United States and then a kind of smattering in other places. But predominantly UK is our is our main. We pretty much just market towards the UK at this current point in time. Got you. And um, you mentioned that the product is ethical beauty, it's natural beauty products. None of it is your own though, is it? I think I'm right in saying it's all, you're reselling other brands' products. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. As a business, we, we came about out of a frustration with the beauty industry in general, that it became too over-reliant on cheap and harmful ingredients. So we've taken it upon ourselves as our mission to help every individual discover safe, clean and natural beauty that works for them and is an effective product. We don't believe there should be a compromise just because it's clean and the performance side of it. So we range over 100 brands across that clean beauty landscape, covering quite a few different product areas from makeup to supplements, to skincare, to hair, even to candles and more kind of lifestyle elements. So it is quite a lot. Yeah, we have over 100 brands all within that space who all themselves fit within that mission. So it is, yeah, we don't have any of our own products. So we're trying to promote ourselves as well as these brands that we range because we love them. We collaborate with them. We work really closely with them and want to promote them as great suppliers of products as well as ourselves as a great destination for these products. And do you think it's easier or harder to be promoting lots of different brands than it would be to be promoting individual brands. Because I think we, at the moment, especially in the world of e-commerce, we hear a lot about D to C and people creating their own products and selling them direct, but it's quite a different skill set when you're managing a whole range and, and you've got all those different brand stories to try and tie together. It is a challenge. There's some pluses to it that the brands themselves have really great stories that we can leverage. Lots of them are still founder run and they have really inspirational, life-changing stories why they came to set up that brand. So it's beautiful for us to be able to share those stories with our customer base. So that's quite nice. There's a lot of content that's just kind of gifted to us. And these brands do a lot of great work themselves in promoting the brand. And then we kind of benefit a slight halo effect from products being seen in TikToks or celebrities use them and we get a bit of a halo effect as well. But yes, it can be challenging when you're trying to balance an even spread of promoting your own name as well as promoting the brands that we stock and run. And definitely at kind of top of funnel marketing We want people to recognize our brand. So we definitely want our logo there and things like that. And it's trying to balance up what's the hook in for a customer. Can we hook in a customer just with our name and our mission? Or do we need a hook of these other brands? So that's sort of balance in the sweet spot we're trying to get to. But it is it is nice to talk about all the brands and showcase all these beautiful products and then bring ourselves in at the end and say, this is who we are. So it can balance out, but there are definitely challenges. Well, there's, there's definitely a, 
a, a fascinating piece of what top of funnel led to the right customers being recruited, you know, full customer lifetime value five years down the line, which is probably almost impossible to track and report on, but would be like gold dust to work that one out. I know that's the dream. We talk about this exact piece of information all the time and we just currently can't quite get to it. But yeah, we're sure there's one product that if you try it as a new customer, you would come back to us forever because it's so great and effective and you would see the benefit of going clean. But yeah, if you know anything on that, I mean, let me know. <laughs> oh, if I, if I could solve that one, <laughs> I'd have a whole software business and consultancy on the go. Um, I think we, we've just got to keep trying, haven't we? Um, but you, you said about, you know, the challenges of recruiting the customer. I think one of the, the other and working out what the right message is. Do you bring them in on the products or do you bring them in on your brand? I think then it, there must also be almost as much challenge in retaining them, you know, because they if they use you as a discovery service, then potentially they then decide to buy direct or they decide to buy in a different way. So is there is there a lot of work you do to try and kind of expand the number of products they buy from you? So, you know, so they come in on, I don't know, body wash, and then you're trying to sell them beauty and sell them hair care and something else. Is that a big aim of what you're doing? Yeah, that is the current aim because you're so right. We've noticed over the last couple of years, big retailers that we just wouldn't be able to compete with have launched um, in the UK or launch brands that we stock and we have just seen a sort of slow gradual decline that is the risk of being a reseller you're really exposed to those kind of elements so we're definitely a trying to build ourselves up as a brand and a destination and give them extra reasons to come to our site we don't want to just be a beauty online reseller we want to be more of an education destination, a discovery destination. So you can come in maybe wanting to buy one thing and then discover all these other things. And we're trying to find the hooks between product categories. So if you came in on a mascara, what's the next item or category down the journey that you'd be willing to swap? There's certain items, if you are using a product and you love it, you'll probably never switch out of it. So it would take a lot of time and effort for us to convince you. But there's certain associations that are maybe easier to do. So we're trying to harness those those associations to upsell and cross-sell our customers, but also do it from an education standpoint, not just you've bought this, buy this, more did you know that these products that you find on the high street contain X amount of products and we've got this range here for you. So more of a reason to swap or a reason to buy across areas rather than just a direct hard sell. Which is so challenging. I can only imagine how challenging it is, but I guess it's becoming worse for, for want of a better word in the space because you're coming, you know, the business begins with this mission towards ethical, cleaner beauty. And then it's great to see that becoming more mainstream, but that also then increases the competition and makes the job harder to stand out. Because if the big high street guys and the, you know, the big online guys are also selling the same brands, how do you achieve that? Which I would assume part of it's about trying to find the next great product. So it, comes back to the merchandising, the buying piece that we were talking about earlier. Is that how you how you find it? It's like we've got to keep finding the new brands. There's definitely an element to that. The beauty industry is quite pacey. There's lots of new brands coming out the whole time. We don't want to just churn through brands. Like I said, we work really closely with these brands that have really great origin stories and they're they're selling and trading for a really great reason. So we want to nurture those. And if the brand feels aligned with us and it's got great effective product that fits our mission, we would onboard it and introduce it to our customer base. We have a lot of really loyal customers, definitely within our CRM program. And we wouldn't really want to put brands out there just for the sake of putting a brand out there. We really want to communicate to them why we've chosen to range them and why it's great and why you should consider buying it. So there is definitely an element of that. You definitely need to kind of fill the leaky bucket type thing, but we don't want to just be churning through brands just for the sake of getting newness. The, the other side is the brands that we do work with are 
coming up with lots of new product innovation themselves. So we do see really great performances when a, you know, a top brand of ours launches a new product and our loyal customer base love trying that for the first time and buying it and sharing their reviews. So it, yeah, it is a balance. We don't want to be bringing on loads of brands. It's also a lot of internal work for us, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which <laughs> we're quite a small team. So we don't want to be doing that the whole time. It, it needs to be right. And if it fits and we think there's interest, we would do it. But yeah, we don't want to just be throwing names out to then not mention them again this time next year. Yeah, I suppose if you're going for that long-term customer, then you, you've you got to be putting the right products in front of them that you think they're going to want to buy. They're going to become those products, like you mentioned earlier, that you're never going to swap. That's, I found my my perfect lip balm. I'm never going to change it now because it's it's the perfect one. Yep, exactly. You wouldn't. A lot of the product that we sell is quite a repeat purchase by shampoo, deodorant, etc. You might buy that once every month, every two months. So yeah, you would be really disappointed if we made this big song and dance about it. And then you came back in six months time and it wasn't there. And then you had to buy some products from us and some products from someone else. So we onboard brands thinking we'll have a lifelong partnership with them. And we met at an event run by Nosto where, strangely enough, personalization was a big old topic. And you've been doing, well, you've kind of been alluding to it already, been doing a lot of work on trying to work out what the right message is for the right customer at the right time. I know it's high on many e-commerce leads and e-commerce managers list at the moment. So for, what's your, what are your kind of key learnings from going on that personalization journey? Any key pieces of, I'm not looking for you to, you know, reveal all your secrets, but um, <laughs> are there any kind of key pieces of advice or things you were surprised by that you found useful to make it work for you? It has been a journey because there's been loads of loads of rules or loads of ideas that we thought would be really obvious and we thought would really work and actually they didn't and then other rules or personalization journeys that we did that were kind of random maybe they were just sort of default out the box ones that Nosto told us about actually did work so it's not always the most obvious thing that you think I think you've got to go into it trying loads of different stuff. And I think you need to expect not to see an immediate result from personalization. You might see it once you break it down and see low level figures, but it's not going to add to your top line as soon as you hit launch. I think there's a lot of bootstrapping down to figure out what certain customer segments like and engage with and respond to and which ones you should just kind of serve default sort rules or default experiences or that kind of thing. It's, I'm still on the journey, Chloe. I still haven't, <laughs> I still haven't nailed it. It's kind of become part of my weekly job. I check in on all the experiences pretty much two, three times a week, just seeing if there's anything. I do obviously let them run. I don't just kind of have knee jerk reactions and turn them off, but it, there's some that over a long period of time really show themselves to be great and there's some that just don't work instantly and then there's others that just kind of don't really do anything. So it is a massive undertaking, that's the word. But I long term, over the course of a year, I think you would see benefits and I think your customers would see benefits. There, for example, our site, we have over 3,000 SKUs. And there used to be products before we onboarded with Nosto, the personalization tool, that I would just see follow me around the site and that I never <laughs> bought. And actually, even as a customer myself, I found that actually quite annoying. Um, and it's taken up valuable retail space. You could have shown me something else in that position and there would be a higher chance I would have at least looked at it, let alone go on to buy it. So I think, yeah, it definitely will pay dividends in the end, but I think it's about working through it, what's right for your company, what's right for your customers and getting some kind of rules in place and seeing where you can then iterate on those ones to get the next level of um, benefit from the tool. But yeah, it's a process. Definitely not a once and done and prepare to be surprised. No, no. no I don't think anything in e-commerce that I've ever done has had instant effects. I'm trying to think. I really don't think so. 
No, I know what you mean. It's, I, if I try and think, and sometimes if something does have an instant effect, it's a once and done and it does it become something you can't repeat. Some For some reason, like the customer gets excited by something new and they, they react to it and then you try it again two months later and it doesn't work. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it's that, it's that constant journey of, of improving the the graphics, the messaging, the segmentation. And have you, in this personalization journey you're on, have you found that it's more about what you put in front of the customer or it's more about the segmentation? Is is one of those levers stronger than the other or is it just does it just vary the whole time? The success that I've had with it recently has been based on segmentation and going to quite low niche segments. But then that does leave everyone else, which is obviously the biggest segment. So my next challenge is trying to work out how I can chip away at that everyone else segment into smaller and smaller bite-sized segments to give them what they need. So yeah, the, the smaller segments that I've done seem to have really responded to the experiences, but it's just a chip off the block. It's maybe about 5% of the traffic so far. So it would still need a lot of work to get through the everyone else segment. Things that I think would work by showing, say, for example, special buy lines where we've got a really great margin on it and can offer a really great price to our customers that I would say show to them all. It just didn't really work. It's quite mad, isn't it? How... um how customers often don't behave the way we think they're going to. Yeah. Then other ways they do. Um, so with all that's that's going on at Naturismo at the moment, what have you got coming up that you're excited about? So we're going to roll out a project based on customer journeys. Uh, well, we're calling it customer journeys, as in what journey is the customer on? From talking to customers directly or engaging with them on Instagram comments or feedback we get from our customer service team. We know a lot of our customers come to us because they're going through something in their lives. So whether that's they're a teenager or they're looking to get pregnant or a pregnant menopausal or have chosen just to buy cruelty-free products, they've come to us for that reason. So we're going to build out shopping experiences in relation to this so that we can really help educate and guide our customers all tied up within a product discovery product exploration type piece but in a more nurturing guiding way a sort of pathfinding way primarily it's about engagement but then definitely product discovery and kind of cross-selling like we said before rather than just a hundred moisturizers on a page, more, what are you going through right now? Is there anything we need to know? Oh, these are three that we think you may like based on that. So a more filtered version, but without filters, I suppose. E-commerce master plan is supported by some of the greatest companies in the e-commerce sector. Here's a reminder of who they are. Are you struggling to boost your Shopify store's visibility? Then you need the Yoast SEO plugin for Shopify. It simplifies SEO by managing the technical complexity so you can focus on growing your business while still standing out in those search results. And they've just made your workload even easier because the new Yoast AI Generate feature is there to speed up the creation of those all important meta descriptions and SEO titles. With just a click, it generates multiple AI powered meta descriptions and title suggestions, quickly enhancing your store's visibility and search results. This is AI done right. You're in control deciding what works best for your store. Save time and stay in control. What are you waiting for? Get your SEO sorted. Learn more at ecmp.info forward slash Yoast dash Shopify. That's ecmp.info slash Y-O-A-S-T dash Shopify. It's time for the top tips round. 
Okay, I love this section because it gives me and our listeners some really quick ideas for taking our businesses to the next level. Judith, are you ready for the top tips? <laughs> yes. Okay, the book top tip. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and read a book to make their business better, which book would you recommend? So the book that's stuck in my mind the most is a book called Black Box Thinking by Matthew Said. He's written a few nonfiction books, one called Bounce, and then the second one, Black Box Thinking. I like it because A, it's not primarily a business focused book. It's just general nonfiction. But I really enjoyed the ideas in it about reframing success and failure. It's about doing something, standing back, assessing what went well, what didn't go well, and how you can iterate on that down the line. And I have taken a lot of inspiration from those within any project that I work on. It doesn't always need to be this way. You can do something and it's not the full stop. You can take something, then learn, change it, move on, try again. Yeah, I think it's a really good one to reframe failure. And also, to not, a bit like what we're saying about personalization, you don't necessarily need to know why something worked. We say, oh, we think this will work because of X. Something might just work and you can just iterate on that without having to have known the reasons why. Well, that sounds really thought provoking. I may have to grab myself a copy. Yeah, it's a really great read. Yeah. Okay. The traffic top tip, which marketing method do you either prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves? Well, I think organic search is probably the star of the show. It's not the sexiest one. It never really gets spoken about in Monday trade meetings or anything like that. But it is such a good old faithful. Once you've done the upfront work of building up a really great SEO campaign and website with links and keywords, it can just churn along, chug along. You do need to maintain it. You need to, you know, water it and feed it and check on it. But really, if all other channels flux up and down, your organic search can just stay pretty solid. So it's a really good base to have as a business. Oh, I completely agree with you on that. Uh, okay, the tool top tip. Maybe a collaboration tool, a social media plugin, a phone app, or just a way of working. Is there a cool little tool you use that makes you and your team more efficient from day to day? It's not really a tool, but we really lean on all the online chat services from the platforms and apps that we use. We're quite a lean team. We don't have, for example, an in-house developer or in-house system specialist. So it is the quickest way for us to get answers, to get advice, to get strategy ideas. It is so much quicker than emailing an account manager and waiting for them to respond if they're even in the right time zone. You might not even have an account manager. You know, we, we're a Shopify business, so we've got loads of small to big apps and platforms plugged in. And I would say most of them I can get pretty instant response from. I probably speak to chat services three, four times a week just for troubleshooting or anything in between, small ideas, big ideas. And you get instant access to someone that's actually quite knowledgeable and is really helpful within that space. So you can really leverage them as an extra member of the team. I love that. That definitely counts as a tool top tip. That's really cool. Thank you. Um, carbon top tip. What's your favorite way to reduce the carbon footprint of an e-commerce store? So as a business, that is something that's really important to us. So all our packaging is quite considered. We only use certain packaging that's either recyclable or dissolvable and green. And our warehouse team is actually super amazing at constantly reviewing that, even down to potentially changing the packaging, well, the, the packaging that we have, but can the products go in a smaller box? So we're constantly trying to reduce the mix down to the smallest box possible. We still want to send the products without them getting smashed or broken. But if we can safely transport them within a smaller box, then we do. It obviously also has a really great benefit of costing less, but it just means that we can send more parcels in one van so there's less journeys. I do think cutting back your packaging delivers on all fronts. 
You know, it reduces the carbon, it reduces cost, and it's the most visible thing to the customer who cares. Yeah, customers get quite annoyed if there's loads of packaging, don't they? And I, well, I personally also get really annoyed. So if if you can safely reduce it without anything affecting the parcel, it's definitely the way to go. So our warehouse team are very great at analysing that. And every order that they place, they really do change the ratio of the box sizes. Judith, thank you so much for those brilliant pieces of advice. Could you please, before we say goodbye, let the listeners know where they can find you and your business on the web and social? Sure. Thank you for having me, Chloe. Naturismo.com is our website. You can also find us on Instagram and TikTok. And if anyone wishes to find out more about me, I'm on LinkedIn under Judith Harvey. Brilliant. Judith, thank you so much for being on the show. It's been lovely getting to chat with you again. Uh, Thank you for being here. Thank you. There's some great insights there on what it's like running a brand where you, or a business rather, where you have multiple brands for sale and the the, the intricacies of trying to make that really work for you in a long-term customer lifetime value stance. Some cool top tips and also kind of bleeding through everything there is really understanding your customer and why they're buying from you and why they're buying the products they're buying. So great to catch up with Judith. Uh, You can get your hands on our notes from this episode, including those top tips and links to what we mentioned by heading over to ecommercemasterplan.com. You can also use our direct to episode short links. Just put ecmp.info forward slash the number of this episode into the URL bar and you'll be redirected straight to the right episode page. When you get to the website, you can also add yourself to our email list so you don't miss out on any of the other things I share to help you improve your business. And if you like this episode, please do make sure you check out episode 510, which is just a couple of weeks ago, where we caught up with Lauren from Philip Kingsley which is all about another angle in the beauty industry. So fascinating chat with Lauren uh, for you to listen to immediately, should you want to. And if you want to hear all our interviews with beauty and healthcare brands and businesses, you can go to ecmp.info forward slash beauty, where you will find um, a web page that lists all our beauty and skincare episodes. Thank you for tuning into this and every episode of the e-commerce master plan podcast. We bring you a new interview every week because we want to inspire and help e-commerce business owners like you to succeed and thrive with your businesses, including progressing along the path to net zero. So if you know someone this show can help, please tell them to listen to the e-commerce master plan podcast. I hope you have a great week and don't forget to keep optimizing. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast. Get your SEO sorted with the Yoast SEO plugin for Shopify. Learn more at ecmp.info forward slash Yoast dash Shopify. That's ecmp.info slash Y-O-A-S-T dash Shopify.